All right, the beginning of chapter 11 is going to discuss your angles and your fractional parts of a circle. So you should have your fraction pieces out, yes? You need to get out your 12, just one 12. You don't need to get them all out, just one is fine. One twelfth. It should be black, I believe. One twelfth. It would be hard to find. You should have twelve of them in there somewhere, so make sure you have one. Yes? All right. It tells you to place your one twelfth piece on the circle. You're going to place the tip of the fraction piece on the center of the circle. Do you see how this person up here in this picture has the tip of it and it's in the middle? Put the tip of it on that circle. It doesn't matter where you start, but you'll need to make sure that it is on that tip. You'll see that it will reach all the way out to the edge of your circle. Do you see that? Okay. You need to make sure you hold it down and you're going to trace down to the little dot and then back up to the top. Do you need to do the outside? No, because it's already there should. Yes, that's perfect. Put it up here and get it drawn. Then you're going to trace both sides of it. You don't have to worry about the top because it's already there on the outside of the circle. Pull it down so it doesn't move because you're going to have to move this around. Okay, what figure did you form by tracing that fraction piece? It is a what? We call it. Okay, guys, when you try, and I can't do this because I don't have the correct size of pieces, but I'm going to show you that you should have something similar to this. What do we call this? This right here is called a what? We just went over the vocabulary, guys. What's it called? We had this before we had break. If I draw from here to here and I have this little circle, which is called a vertex, and I go back out here, what is this called? It's an angle. My goodness. I hope that we have a little bit better time with the rest of it. So you're going to have an angle each time you're drawing this. Yes? Okay. What parts of the fraction piece represent the rays of the angle? So which parts are rays? Okay. The straight sides, correct? So you're going to say the straight sides. It can't be the top part, it's going to be the sides. From here to here would be a ray. From the circle to out here would be another one. So what part of the circle is the vertex of the angle? Kind of gave you that one. It is the center of the circle. The next direction tell you. Shade the angle that was formed by the 112th piece. So you're going to nicely shade it in. It doesn't have to be too dark or you won't be able to see what we need to write. And they're actually writing their labels on the outside. So you're going to quickly shade this in. And then out here you're going to label it with 112th because that piece is one. Well, now you may not all have your 112 piece in the same exact spot. That is okay. We just want you to understand that you have 112 right now. It should be shaded, Brayden. Right all right. This is where you're going to have to pay a little bit of attention. It says to place the 112 piece back on the shaded angle that you have. So you're going to put it right back over where it was. Then you're going to turn it counterclockwise. Which way did we talk about was counterclockwise? Left. So that means that if I was moving mine, I'm going to move it over here. So that means I'm going to lay it to where it's right here next to this side. It's still touching the center circle or the vertex. You with me? And then how many sides of it do you have to trace then? Only one. So you're going to trace it then. You're moving your piece 
over clockwise one. That means that the piece that's over here on this side is now going to be right here. So then you should have it traced again. You're moving the whole piece. Where's your piece at? You're moving the whole thing from here to here and you're retracing. You don't have to shade this time. Is that the edge? All right, so then you're tracing that side. Does everybody see what they're supposed to be doing? So now you should have how many pieces that look like this? Two. Two. Okay, what are you going to label this with? It's how many do you have now? Two twelves. So that's what you're leaving it as. So you should have two of them. Yes? So how many twelves have you tra traced in all? Two. So you're labeling it with two twelves. Okay? You're going to continue to turn the fraction piece counterclockwise again and trace it. You're going to label the total number of twelves all the way around. Now, if you don't come up even, what did you do? You didn't sit it next to it, close enough to it, to where you can go all the way around. It should come out equal when you are finished. Yes? So continue to move the piece counterclockwise. Don't forget that you need to continue to label. So for number one, you need to get out a fourth piece. You're going to lay it back on the top of the circle that you just traced so that we can compare the size of the angles formed by the one fourth and the one twelfth piece. You can also look at your actual pieces. Here was your twelfth piece, right? Here is your fourth piece. I can sit them on top of each other, right? How many times would I have to do that? And as you can see, when you put it on top of your circle that you traced, how many pieces of the twelfth does it cover? Three. It covers three of them. So the size of the angle formed by a one-fourth piece is how many times larger? Three. Three times larger. So that's what we're going to write. The size of the angle formed let's see, by the one-fourth piece is three times the size of the angle formed by the one twelfth piece. I can't get a whole lot in there, so hopefully you can. You laid your one fourth piece over top of your circle that you traced, you should have covered up three of those one twelfth pieces. So the size of the angle. Formed by the one fourth piece is three times the size of the angle formed by the one twelfth piece. I want you to think about number two while you're waiting on people to write this. It's asking you to describe the relationship between the size of the fraction piece and the number of turns it takes to make a circle. So how many did it take to do with the 112? 12. Did you see the size of the piece? Pretty small, right? Yeah. Now if I was to do that with the one fourth piece, is it going to take as many times? So what's the relationship here? Who can explain it to me? We're dealing with size and the amount of times we have to turn it. Kenzie? Okay, so basically the larger the fraction piece, the 
least amount of times it has to go around, right? Or the smaller the fraction piece, the more times. So we can kind of decide how we want to do that. Let's use smaller because I think it's easier to say. The smaller the fraction piece. The more turns it takes to make a circle. So the smaller the fraction piece, the more turns it takes to make a circle. The larger the fraction piece is going to take less turns. Now take a look at the next section. Why do you think we just spent all that time doing this on a circle? Because what are we going to be using it with? The clock. Hence the reason we used counterclockwise when we were supposed to be doing our turns. So we're going to make some connections. We're going to use and relate fractions and angles to the hands of a clock. Okay? So it says let the hands of the clock represent the rays of an angle. Each five minute mark represents a twelfth of a turn clockwise. We know that when we read the clock, we always have to go clockwise, yes? So every five minutes is the one twelfth. So as you look at yours that you just had over here, every five minutes is the twelfth, because there's how many numbers on a clock? Twelve. See the correlation now? That's why we use the twelfth piece, because there are twelve numbers, therefore you're going to have it. So every five minutes represents the twelfth. So here, if you look, the angle is going from the 12 to the 3, so 15 minutes have elapsed. Is everybody following that? The minute hand makes a what kind of turn clockwise? If I'm using fractions, what kind of turn is it making from the 12 to the 3? I know it's 15 minutes, but what is my fraction that we would be turning, Logan? One fourth, but in other people's language, some of you may need to know that it was how many twelfths? Three twelfths. We also know that three twelfths is the same thing as one fourth. Okay? So if you're one of those people that likes to do the twelfths because you know that it's in twelfths, you could tell me that it was three twelfths, but you would still need to tell me that that is going to be simplified to one fourth. Okay, so there's 15 minutes. Look at the next one. 30 minutes is elapsed from the 12 to the 6. See how it's going halfway around? So the minute hand makes a what kind of turn clockwise here? Morgan? 6 twelfths, which is also what? One half. Now you don't have to write 6 twelfths, but if that's something that's going to help you to understand that it's a half, you can write that too. You can't just write a 6 twelfths, so what do you need to make sure you do? Simplify. You've probably heard that a lot this year. Okay, so 15 minutes was to the 3, 30 minutes was to the 6, now look where it's going. To the 9, so it's going to be 45 minutes elapsed from the 12 all the way to the 9 is 45 minutes. So what kind of turn is this? Aiden? Okay, 9 twelfths or three-fourths. Is everybody following the amount of twelfths? We're at the nine, it's nine twelfths. Okay, and then the last one means we went all the way around for 60 full minutes. So what kind do I have now, Lena? What kind of turn did it make? Yep, 12 twelfths, or one full turn clockwise. So I made one full hour, all the way around. Any questions on those clocks? Hopefully already you know that from the 12 to the 3 is 15 minutes, from the 12 to the 6 is your 30 minutes. 
the 12 to the 9 is 45, and all the way around with the 60 or one hour. Should you know that by now? 